And that's not very nice. Uh, we have to do something here. Is that happening also to your bridge? Then stay tuned and I show you what you can do from your side to avoid that your bridge is bending in one direction or in another one. Hello, hello, back again. I'm Ed Girls from Cremona, Italy, and I tell you today how to prevent a bending bridge, a wrapped bridge or S-shaped bridge. You don't want that on your instrument. To know that, subscribe. Thank you very much. Here I have now to show it better a double bass bridge. Finally, the bass players are happy now. This is a raw bridge. And the first thing violin makers do is to bring it to the right thickness. Mainly we adjust the back side, the side which goes to the tailpiece, and we adjust the thickness of the feet. And we adjust it in a way that here where the two arms are, we try not to plane anything in order that we have the maximum strength. And this is the first ingredient that it doesn't bend too much. Wood is a soft material and we don't want it to be completely stable. It needs to vibrate. And then we adapt the feet to the belly of the top. And here starts the first big issue. If you put the bridge on it, the idle position would be... The idle position are actually that the bridge at the very end divides this angle of the strings into two equal parts. Since this one is rather flat, and this one is more inclined, it appears that it is leaning to the backside. And that's the reason why we fit the feet to the backside. And this is a 90 degree angle. At the very end, all that is needed in order that once the bridge is on the right position, and that's something you need to know exactly, I will give you some measurements from here to the backside of your bridge. You can measure it. And then the second thing for you as a musician is how long is my string length. If these two things are correct and the bridge foot is 90 degree, then everything is pretty good already. Now, if you tune, you move the bridge towards the fingerboard. This is me and these are my shoes. If I'm now a little bit leaned to the front, let's say, I cannot for a long time lean like this. So very likely my butt will be a little bit more to the front because of this angle. And then I would put my shoulders a little bit to the back. And then at a certain point, I'm again in a certain position where I could last for longer time. And especially when there comes a weight from the upper side, I probably have to make a little bit like this. Now I would get back ache and your bridge is doing exactly the same if the feet are not perfectly fitted on the top the lower part is leaning too much to the front then the back side wants to go a little bit more behind and you when you put it right with your hands you put it back and then it starts to have a line and it doesn't look very nice and it won't last for very long i have seen wrapped and banded bridge at a certain point when it's not straight anymore they absorb your vibrations and it is unavoidable that it results that at a certain point these bridges will break when people say and, and then the bridge broke Behind that, there is mainly the reason that the whole bridge didn't stand very well. If everything is fitted well and from the very beginning in the right position and you from time to time, at least, at least once a week, check the bridge that everything is nice, then it's good. And one thing could be that it is not 90 degree fitted, the feet. But the other thing could be that you didn't adjust the upper part of the bridge to the right string length and that it is perfectly standing how it should be. Every time you tune it is moving and every time you tune you have to readjust from the upper side a little bit. If you want to learn how to cut a perfect bridge, by the way, you should sign up to my violin making online academy and you'll learn exactly how it has to be done.
One more thing I wanted to point out. People always want immediately a new bridge. If you have a little bit more time and the bridge, all the rest is perfect. String height, curve, you like it how it's made, you like who it made, it sounds great, the violin. Then go to the maker and he could actually take off the bridge, adjust the angle of the feet and he is softening the wood of the bridge with some steam and then is putting it under with a clamp to leave it dry in the right position. He could recover an old bridge so it's just a question of time that he has to do it and then leave it a few days and then you can re-put the bridge on adjust it of course because if he doesn't adjust it it will return just the way it has been before just popped up in my mind that i have one instrument which i made many many years ago for my daughter it's for my private property if you look at it damn this is banned very much you can see it here how this is spanned and the main reason is that here the angle is not correct so the feet are a little bit too much to the front this part moves to the front and then the rest turns back and you can see how this is bent. You hardly can believe when you work on it that it's bending so much. But because of the spring tension, these arms come strong to the front. Just by looking at it, I have already backache, you know? And you certainly don't want something like this to have it on your instrument. <laughs> you caught me. Okay. I hope you got now the message. A perfect bridge, which lasts for 20 and even more years, is a combination between a well-fitted bridge, like I teach in my violin making academy, and the good habit of the musician who knows exactly how the bridge should stand, who lifts up the, the, the strings from time to time to loosen it a little bit up so it doesn't cut into the bridge, and he adjusts the bridge continuously, checking it, looking it in every break, and every time after tuning. See you next time. Tell your friends, subscribe. Ciao, ciao. Ci vediamo. Ciao.